which is on uh, financial inclusion of Bharat, insights into people, markets and uh, startups, a uh, report by CI Co. And we have uh, both our speakers on the stage, starting with Supriya Sharma, Partner Insights at CI Co. She leads research at uh, CI Co, India's leading entrepreneurship uh, continuum of innovation built at IIM Ahmedabad. Insights at CI Co undertakes research in three forms, sector intelligence, learning resources and tools and academic investigations. They publish sharp data-driven insights and resources for founders, policymakers, incubators, investors and other stakeholders in the Indian startup ecosystem. We also have with us Mr. Alkesh Wadhwani, Director, Poverty Alleviation, India. His profile comprises programmatic uh, work in agriculture development, water, sanitation and hygiene, financial services for the poor and gender equality. Previously, he led the health, nutrition and family planning portfolio for the foundation in India. He joined the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in India in 2003 and was one of the key members who helped conceptualize the, and implement the $338 million fund uh, funded Avahan program, the AIDS initiative of the world's largest HIV AIDS prevention program. Before joining the foundation, he worked for McKinsey and Company, where he served clients in India, Asia, Europe and the US in the financial services and pharmaceutical sectors. So we'll start with uh, Supriya and then we will come over to uh, Alkesh Wadwani. Over to you. Sir. You can speak from there if you wish to. You both can have a conversation there. Or if you want to show. The okay, then here. Hi, good evening. Um, very glad that you were able to make it and, and join us for the launch of this book. Um, before we invite Alkesh to launch the book formally, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to give you a little introduction, a little background uh, about who we are and the kind of work that we've done. Um, takes me back to 25th January 2018 when uh, a couple of about 24 um, academics, researchers, um, founders, um, um, sector of financial inclusion champions gathered together in, um, in, in a seminar hall in, in the new campus of IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, they spent the entire day together, deliberated on what would it take to, to solve for uh, this hard problem of, of financial exclusion in India. Um, during or the, the group left with about 95 open questions um, on, uh, on interventions that would be required for, for us to see this, this change. Um, this, this, this deliberation essentially formed the basis of, of what we've done, what we've created or curated as, as a program which is called the Bharat Inclusion Initiative. Um, if I was to describe it best, Bharat Inclusion Initiative is, uh, um, how does this go forward? Is, is a continuum of interventions, um, all focused on solving the hard problem of financial inclusion, uh, uh, financial exclusion in the country. Uh, there are four components to to this entire continuum. We begin with investigate, where we dive into research um, data so as to unearth, so as to draw out insights about the little or little that we know about the Bharat segment, the underserved uh, customer, segments, customer segment in the country. This, the second part of the continuum is, is what is what, what we're calling stimulate, which is where we catalyzed game-changing novel use cases um, that could again impact the problem of financial ex exclusion in the country. The third part of the continuum is, is where we accelerate um, uh, startups um, building these, these, these solutions so as to, for them to be able to serve larger groups of people and impact their lives. And then finally we invest in, uh, in, in startups building fintech solutions, building in inclusive fintech solutions uh, for this target segment. 
over the course of the um we've been running bii the bharat inclusion initiative for four years 2018 to 2022 um and in this duration and the program continues to run but in this duration we've been able to um support over 50 accelerate and support over 50 startups who've gone on to launch uh, over 40 products and therefore impact the lives of more than 30 million um customers about half of them uh, more than half of them would be women customers uh, these startups of course have been able to um validate their their business models their their presence they've gone on to raise um about over 80 million of follow on equity uh, capital and they've been able to generate more than 700 jobs a significant part of um, bii has been the research that we've been doing on the sector um in these last four years we've undertaken 24 different research studies um which have brought together or at least have put have put together data of i mean data from uh data about various customer groups various thematic areas such as the gig workers uh mistrust in digital financial services uh the urban poor the rural households we worked with some stellar co-investigators both from i mean of course from academia from the industry some founders as well um and we of course this entire uh, research piece includes various research initiatives like the financial inclusion for rural transformation uh the series that we've run called the people of bharat um and a couple of others the book that we are launching today is really the consolidation of of all our research over the last 4 years um i will take this uh, this moment to invite alkesh to do the book launch for us and um, deliver a keynote subsequently maybe Okay, I'll be here. So I'm delighted to have launched the book uh, Financial Inclusion for Bharat: Insights into People, Markets, and Startups. Uh, for all of us in this room, financial inclusion has been uh, given uh, for many years. Uh, what perhaps upi and apps like phone pay gpay paytm have done is make it easier for us uh, to do financial transactions but frankly even without them uh, we had access to financial services and we've all been financially included whoever's in this room uh, maybe in 2017 18 uh, financial inclusion was a problem uh, but if you see the stats in india you may wonder so what's left now how much more is there really in terms of financial inclusion for bharat uh, and the stats are pretty good over the last few years if you see i mean due to uh, uh, pmjdy uh, there have been uh, so many uh, jandan accounts that now 80% of india has accounts uh, i think uh, 4.5 crore jandan accounts have been launched of which more than half are for women so it's not that women have been excluded from accounts even women have um you know give or take 80% of 80% of adult women would have accounts in india uh you know if you look at business correspondence or bcs even if there aren't enough branch, branch bank branches in india there are now more than 3 million bcs uh so while there might be a few dark spots you could say there are enough bcs to cover india uh if you look at the way qr codes have grown uh i think there are now 100 95 million qr codes uh, even if you look at and there might be about 25 to 30 million 30 million 
uh, retailers in the country, retail shops. So clearly much more than retail shops have QR codes, even if you say that some retail shops have more than one QR code. So it's your Doodwala that will have a QR code, your newspaper wala who will, who will have a QR code and so on. Uh, so in many ways the infrastructure has been set up over the last few years and things have changed since we partnered with CI uh, Co to actually think about financial inclusion. Uh, similarly, if you look at AEPS, I think there are about 400 million transactions a month on AEPS. And uh, AEPS, uh, Aadhaar Enabled Payment Systems, is something that allows people to access their cash and other services without having a smartphone, without having a debit card, with your thumbprint as many of you would, or fingerprint as many of you would know in, your, in the room. Uh, so, you know, a lot of, and UPI, I mean, just amazing the growth. I think now it's about 6.5 billion transactions a couple of months back. So monthly transactions and I think their goal is to make it 1 billion transactions a year. I mean a month, a day. So 1 billion transactions a day would be pretty en enormous and I hear that uh, they are planning many initiatives which are go this they are showcasing in, uh, in, you know, in this, uh, in this uh, convening itself. Uh, so the story looks quite good and yet I would say that the need for financial inclusion today is as much as it was or nearly as much as it was uh, three years back despite all this amazing progress. Uh, and there are many reasons I say that so I can quote the same facts in another way. While UPI has grown to 6.5 billion transactions a month and dramatically increasing the number of users, perhaps we still have three to 400 million users of UPI uh, in India. Uh, so 800 million people don't use UPI uh, and even if we tr and I'm sure it will grow by leaps and bounds every month uh, but even then if you have a if you have a feature phone and three to four hundred million people in India have a feature phone it's really really tough as you would all know to use UPI on feature phones uh, similarly if you look at business correspondence so while there are three point three three million plus business correspondence uh, even today, more than 90% of transactions are done through banks and less than 10% through BC. So clearly the BC model, while growing, has some challenges. And this is despite the fact that the BCs are so close and there are only 70,000 odd uh, bank branches in rural and semi-urban areas. So you're talking about one branch per 10 villages. And still most of the transactions are you know, done in back branches even though access is not very easy. So clearly a lot has to be done with BCs to make it really as uh, powerful as the opportunity is. Uh, so uh, all this to say that this is where BII comes in and this is where, uh, you know, we feel that we were privileged to partner with them to help the journey of financial inclusion for Bharat. And we hope that all of you, all the fintechs here, uh, who think about launching products will think about Bharat too. Uh, because Bharat, at least for us, is important. Uh, the reason, as Gates Foundation, financial inclusion for Bharat is important is there's just so much research as CI has done and is, as, and is in the book that, sh that shows the power of financially including both poor men or poor women uh, in the formal sector. Uh, whether it is... Uh, just getting bank accounts opened or using bank accounts and it has all sorts of spin-off benefits to account holders getting more formal for, formal credit to account holders saving more uh, to account holders having more especially women having more em empowering them having more agency to be able to influence household decisions and that often leads to more money being spent on the family especially on nutritious food so it might seem, okay, where is all this connected? But this is really the power of financial inclusion. And that's what we care about. And that's why we uh, hope that by making this grant, which as you can see, Supriya talked about all the benefits uh, that this grant has been able to bring to founders uh, and fintechs and innovators, that we are really able to get uh, uh, the, the Bharat or the poor included in this journey that all of us take for granted. Uh, so what this book does is it captures these insights that Supriya spoke about and it has three sections. Uh, so the first is insights about people. 
So uh, there are case studies of 24 people from Bharat. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it gives you a flavor of who the customer really is because without understanding the customer, I think it's really difficult to launch any uh, product or any service without understanding the customer. And just as one example, it has the story of Nita, who earns four to five hundred rupees a month selling sprouts and lives in a two-bedroom house. Uh, after being effectively bankrupt, after losing her husband and her family, and having no choice but to say, I have to do something. And through this journey, it describes how she lives her life and how she's reached the stage that by selling sprouts, she's able to make about 500 rupees a month. Uh, and save a small amount of that uh, to be able to take care for a rainy day. And clearly there are, there's a potential to serve these kind of customers who are, this Nita is non-literate, uh, she's unable to uh, read or write, uh, but still uh, she's able to make the 500 rupees a month, month despite again not working till her husband died. Uh, and there is an opportunity to serve this, this persona, this kind of, uh, women who do micro enterprises. Uh, the second is an insight into products and markets. Uh, so in this, there are four research studies undertaken by IMA profs, professors and the CIO team and uh, key insights and use cases from 12 research fellowships, as Supriya said. So an example is one of the studies looked at uh, the agri sector and it has a uh, clear set of recommendations on how to build the UI UX for uh, the agri sector uh, if you want to serve the lower uh, the lower and middle class of India and the UI UX design uh, you know whether it's data entry whether it's navigation or any other aspect of uh, UI UX will have to be very different if that's the segment you want to serve uh, I realize that many may not want to serve the segment but for those who believe that even if uh, you want to serve all segments and not focus fully on the lower cl middle class segment. It's worth thinking about these UI UX principles and specific examples that can build out a successful product. So there are many more examples on products and markets that would be helpful to fintechs. And the last is an insight into startups. Uh, there are seven case studies uh, that capture the lessons about these seven startups. So with that, I hope that you find this book valuable. And for, for us, again, it's been a privilege to work with CIICO uh, to help catalyze uh, the, the uh, financial inclusion for the poor uh, for Bharat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alkesh. That was um, very, very encouraging um, um, and at least tells us about some, some good work that we've been able to do for the last couple of years. I will take um, a, a few minutes to give um, or at least give you a sneak, sneak, uh, sneak peek into, into what the book looks like in the kind of insights that we are carrying um, as part of, of this book. Could I have the presentation up? Like Alkesh shared, uh, the book has three sections. Uh, sorry about this. Financial inclusion of Bharat has three sections and essentially these three sections uh, are uh, curated to help address three big questions that may be relevant for fintech founders building for the Bharat segment. First is who are you building for? Who's the customer that you're building for? Second is what are the solutions that are required um, to solve for financial, for financial exclusion of this underserved segment? And the third is what could, what would be, how would you organize delivering these solutions? What, and that's, that's really the section that dives into some, some ways in which um, some of the most promising inclusive fintech startups are delivering these solutions. The first section, which is um, which dives into into this target customer, tells us stories of the people of Bharat. These are real stories, sourced from across 
uh, across India. And when we talk about the people of Bharat, we talk about Imli from Chhattisgarh, um, who's who's trying to put together a corpus, who works as a construction labor and is trying to put together a corpus um, for her younger sister to get married. She she very proudly. Um, um, uh, I think she's very proud of being able to support her her aging parents. Um, when we talk about the people of Bharat, we speak about uh, we talk about Samil Pasha, who has a eight room house in his village, but is uh, for want of better employment, he had to move to a city where he um, he uh, manages a poultry farm uh, and lives in a two room house. He's he has two young daughters and is um, di is driven by uh, making better career prospects or at least being able to better the career prospects of, of his daughter so that they open and run a company of their own someday. Uh, when we talk about the people of Bharat, we speak about Roshni, um, who comes from a family that is deeply into debt. Uh, Roshni, this 25-year-old, is determined to help her family emerge from, uh, from, from their, their, their struggles with debt. We also talk about Usman, who um, is a tailor and is building a house for his family funded entirely by his monthly income. We, um, of course, speak about Mira, who um, exited uh, an abusive uh, marriage and is now uh, has now found an opportunity in making and, 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 and delivering tiffins. She still um, feels quite un unconfident of uh, dealing with money and therefore deposits all her earnings with her mother and, and, and has her mother take care of expenses as well. We speak about Sumant, who's, who's quite prolific with digital fintech, um, uh, with usage of, of digital financial products. Uh, he gets quite exasperated with people being poor with, with financial management. We also speak about um, Bhadra, who, who was really one among those who left um, for their for their villages on foot when the COVID lockdown struck. Bhadra is now trying to gain his life um, back. He works uh, in, uh, in, a, in a highway hotel, quote unquote, a highway hotel, and trying to rebuild his life. Um, we, when we talk about the people of Bharat, we also talk about Nupur, um, whose life fell apart with the passing of her husband. Um, a vision in calmness, Nupur is building, is learning the ropes of, uh, of building a life and taking care of her daughter, trying to ensure that her daughter has a, has a better future. These essentially are people of Bharat. The book carries, we've, we've run this uh, series of stories over the last four years. We've published 52 stories and these are stories of real people um, sourced from, from across um, various states. Um, the book carries 24 of these stories and our hope is with, with publishing the stories, um, we are able to nudge um, or at least build some empathy um, for this target um, uh, customer segment. This next section in the book is about um, or delves into insights or brings out the insights about products and markets. Um, and here this carries multiple studies uh, done either in, in collaboration with IIM Ahmedabad, done by our team in-house, and of course um, uh, the large uh, section of work done by uh, the research fellows and some of whom are in this room. Um, one of our latest studies uh, dives into or is, is looking at um, is looking at data from the rural households and using this data of about 93,000 households uh, across um, 17 states in the country, we've been able to um, confidently talk about the impact of uh, BC agents on the number of uh, women opening bank accounts, what is the impact of a woman, of a woman, a rural household 
uh, uh, having a bank account on the decision making, on the participation in decision making by women and what happens as a result of women participating in more decisions on the household's formal borrowing. Uh, this is the first time that uh, that we are learning about about these insights uh, backed on on hard data. Um, the section also carries insights from uh, the recent survey, which is uh, bringing back data from about 30 villages in UP. Uh, this is telling us about the impact of of, of fintech product usage. Uh, as well as able to tell us the difference in, in financial inclusion for the same set of households from 2016 and 2022. This section also carries some of our work that we've done on uh, very pressing questions in the space of financial inclusive fintech in the country, like, like this toolkit on um, UI UX design explorations, uh, particularly for fintechs aiming to build uh, trust in, in their customers. The section carries um, uh, visualizations and visualized insights from our research fellowships, um, many of which are talking about novel use cases. Um, and um, some of these, these, these studies are also boldly reimagining how um, financial products could look like for uh, this underserved customer segment. Um, some of these studies, our fellowship studies, have also been able to um, give us pointed inputs about how do you redesign products and how do you redesign delivery. For ex I mean, like like this one that told us about how do you deliver financial literacy so for it to have um, uh, the impact that it is supposed to have, that it is it is expected to have. Um, I will move on to the third section in in the book, which uh, delves into which presents case studies like, like Alke shared. Uh, the book carries um, insights from seven cases that we've written on inclusive fintech startups. Um, the goal behind writing these cases has been to equip the ecosystem about, uh, or equip and inform the ecosystem about the dilemmas that one, that uh, an inclusive fintech uh, startup and a founder would typically face in designing and delivering and scaling up these products for the underserved um, uh, Bharat segment. Um, like I said, um, this is a con consolidation, a coming together of all our research that we've done over the last four years. Uh, we are hoping that we're through this research we are able to contribute to an understanding of three um, big questions in the inclusive fintech, sta in fintech space, but all in all, it seems like we're only getting started. Thank you so much. Uh, all of this research wouldn't have been possible without uh, the uh, I mean, really encouraging support from uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and our friends um, in the foundation like Alkesh and, and Pawan. Um, all, all of our research, this entire, this book is available on our digital platforms. I suppose the QR codes will be available um, on multiple places. Uh, but if you need to talk more about this work, some of us are here, please do reach out. Thank you so much.